Today we're returning to my rookie rebuild on Madden 22. This is a series I started when my practice squad rebuild file no longer worked. And then they introduced the scouting a couple of weeks later and I wasn't quite ready. So I've been doing my Giants rebuild now for a few weeks, but I didn't want to just leave this series entirely. I wanted to see if we could do this challenge still. So if you haven't seen this, I did a fantasy draft and selected a team that was 100% rookies at the time. 2021 rookies with Justin Fields at quarterback and Jamar Chase and Christian Derisaw, Panay Sewell. There were a lot of really, really good rookies on this team. Since then, the goal has been to only add rookies to the team. The only way a new player can join is if they are a rookie. So we can draft players, we can sign undrafted players. I suppose we could trade for rookies, but I've never really done that. So we're going to continue, but we're obviously going to make this a very different deal than my Giants franchise where I already have my now, my full kind of hardcore rebuild experience, but I wanted this to be something different now that the Giants series has been going and I'm like 10 episodes into it as I record this. So this is going to become more of a simulated rebuild style of deal and I don't expect it to go on for a lot longer because we're going to move at a very rapid pace and do mostly simulating so if you're into that that's what this is going to be if not the Giants rebuild is obviously there on the channel and it'll be the main focus going forward but I wanted to get some things wrapped up because there are other games I would like to get to but need to get other stuff finished now currently the Seahawks are only one and three in this new season it hasn't exactly gone as I had hoped Last year was a 7-10 and 10 season, so I was hoping that in year 3 for all of these rookies, we'd see some good growth, but it's still taking some time, and I think a big reason is because Justin Fields isn't a high overall, and the offensive line needs a lot of time. We have good developments, but that's just the way old linemen develop in Madden, and they really have to look at how they can get these players to progress quicker. It's easy for positions where you get yardage and awards and player of the week stuff, but at offensive line, they haven't really had anything when a few years ago, like there would be goals for like team rushing yards and team passing yards. And while it wasn't perfect, it did allow you to quickly develop offensive linemen on teams that played well. But here is an update on where the team is. And the majority of players are drafted from that fantasy draft. I have gone through some off seasons since and I've added you know a running back because that's always what I end up doing on the channel so we have Dom Williams here number 16 but that's the only new player on offense that plays a lot defensively Micah Parsons became a superstar x-factor and I had drafted some really good high dev players in the last off season I did a few weeks ago Brian Philbin, 79 overall. I mean, you develop him and he can absolutely wreck teams inside. Super strong and athletic. You really can't go wrong here with Brian Philbin. I knew the beginning of this experiment would really just be about time and how quickly can these players develop before they need contracts. I don't know what the contract situation is going to become, but I imagine today we're going to find out. Because in Fantasy Draft, the players you select first will have four-year contracts. And then down the line, it's three years, two years, and one year. So we still have Fields under contract for a while. And maybe it was five years. I forget exactly. So you're kind of in a race against the clock here right away doing a rookie rebuild like this trying to get everybody developed before you have contract problems all over the place and you know with all these upper developments like keeping this team together is not going to be easy. As we continue on it is the old version of scouting and for a simulated rebuild it is probably a lot easier to have this system in place. 
so it'll allow me to go through things a bit quicker and hopefully make good use of those early picks. All right, that's enough setting up the episode. Let's make some progress now. We began this season with three straight losses, but now have two consecutive wins. I just simmed this match up against the Saints, and we do win against Trey Lance. Three touchdowns, two picks for him. Kind of a quiet game here, not a very good one for Justin Fields, but no turnovers at least. So we're able to grind out a win here against the New Orleans Saints. The winning continues in a matchup against the Cowboys where we drop 40 points. Justin Fields, two touchdowns in the game, 19 of 32 passing. And Javante Williams, 3.6 a carry on the ground with a touchdown. And Dom Williams found the end zone as well. Devontae Smith leads us in receiving, and then kind of a surprise here as Anthony Schwartz gets more playing time and certainly made the most of it. Injuries are certainly rough to deal with in series like this, and we're going to miss Odafe Owe, one of our edge rushers, for five weeks. These breakout chances have been big as well. Caleb Farley had an interception in the last game, and if he can do this he'll end up with superstar development but these corner upgrades are some of the toughest in the game there's also a lot of upgrading to take care of pretty much every week and Justin Fields is up to an 81 would be an 82 if morale was a little bit better and that's currently at 49 so not far from having that at least be neutral no way Caleb Farley actually did it he got up to superstar dev in our last game. Let's go check this out. We've gotten so lucky with developments in here with players like Micah Parsons and Nick Fulton on defense. And that is going to continue now into the secondary. Four straight wins. Don't even tell me he actually picked up two interceptions in this game. Well, he couldn't have. Zach Wilson here only had one interception. He was also sacked eight times. Maybe it's possible Farley came up with one of them? I'm not sure if sacks actually matter for the corners in this case, but a ton of pass rush production here. And then Farley had a tackle for loss, an interception, and it just worked. I don't think tackle for loss was included in there, but it did work. Farley's played really well in the games that we have actually watched in here, so now he's got a chance to become one of the best cornerbacks in the league. I know he has an interception now in two straight games, and those are his first two picks since year one of this franchise. The 0-3 start was not at all a sign of things to come for this team, as we then rattled off six straight wins, but now have lost three of four. And the offense didn't play well in a couple of these games. But we lead the division and have a chance to go to the playoffs now for the first time with four games to go. We're 30th in offensive points per game. We're not passing the ball all that well. It's no surprise the defense has progressed quicker than the offense where you really need your quarterback to be high rated. And when an offensive line is low rated, it's going to hold you back and injuries don't help. We lose Christian Derrissaw, he'll be back soon. Hunter Freeman is back, he was hurt towards the beginning of this year. And then for the defense, I mean, we have only one normal development starter, and it's no surprise that we've already been able to turn this into a solid defense in a short amount of time. We have a breakout chance now in one of the biggest games of the season. We have Jaden Timmons, a chance to get up to star development. We already have a ton of star development players, but it's seven and six versus seven and six, and this could end up deciding the division. And we've now lost four out of five games. Again, held back a bit by the offense, but I suppose we gave up 35 points as well. Looks like they only had five third down conversions, three red zone touchdowns. 
but Fields ended up with three touchdown passes, and the numbers aren't great for completion percentage or yards per attempt, but it's not terrible. Running game is still just okay. We're kind of middle of the pack at that. Run defense struggles here in this game for us. Bateman scores twice. More production here from Anthony Schwartz. I didn't do anything to give him more snaps. I know Bateman was hurt at one point, but he isn't now. Parsons, two and a half sacks. He will end up leading the team at the end of the year, most likely. But can these upgrades help make a difference here with the end of the season approaching and a real chance to make it to the playoffs? Good upgrade there for Fields. Hopefully boosting the offensive line can start to make the running game a bit more productive. I still feel like they don't give enough points to offensive linemen for upgrades. It's as simple as that. It's also incredibly inconsistent because here, I mean, it's a total of six points going up for Panay Sewell. So some of these contracts are already coming up, and the first big decision here is going to be on Nick Bolton, who's set to make around $10 million a year after getting that boost to star dev. We don't want to have to replace good players right now, and eventually it should be more difficult to manage the cap. But I think for now, I'm okay making this signing, especially because the signing bonus isn't huge. And that deal is done. Then we have Quinn Mainers, and with a star dev, 24-year-old offensive lineman, probably don't want to see him go anywhere either. So we'll boost up the signing bonus in the years a little bit, and that is done. We've won two games in a row, putting up a lot more points and having to win these shootouts. We get it done in overtime here, and Kellen Mond had to play considerably in this game. Well, seven pass attempts. 31 for Fields. Combined, they put up a productive day that helped us score the victory. Javante Williams, 24 for a buck 13. We love seeing that. Devante Smith, 72 yards. No major receiving standouts. A pick for J.C. Horn. Two sacks for Brian Philbin. Would love to see him take Rookie of the Year. And we've gotten to the bottom of this on-the-block talent tree. So we just boosted all the old lineman strength by four, which should give us like an immediate boost in the running game, which is huge. So, three years into this rookie rebuild, and we are a playoff team for the first time. We did not win the division. The Rams took it. They won a tiebreaker against us. So, we end up making it in as the NFC's sixth seed. Which means we have a first round matchup now with the Washington football team. We still ended up ranking very poorly at all the offensive numbers, but defensively, average to above average. But our first matchup is going to pit us up against the team that scored more than anybody. They run the ball very well and have a good defense at the same time. We gotta be heavy underdogs in this matchup. On we go to the first playoff game of the series, and it's all tied up one quarter into it. We'll get to the fourth quarter, like late in the fourth, and see if it gets interesting at all. We wanna move very rapidly today, and all of a sudden, it's become our game to lose. 17-10 in the third quarter. Washington, I think, got a safety and then a touchdown. And then they extend their lead. So they've scored a bunch of points here unanswered. Not looking so good for our team. Still, I think the hope was that we would continue our improvement and make the playoffs. And we did that. But the offense just isn't good enough right now. It puts a lot of stress on the defense. And the whole team is still developing, so three years is just not enough time to get this team championship ready. Just to check the numbers too, we gave up 350 yards to a rookie quarterback, and they didn't run the ball? We were able to completely stop the running game at the expense 
of stopping nothing through the air. How many rushing yards? 23. Come on. Justin Fields still had 30 touchdown passes and just 7 interceptions, so I gotta think that things are headed in the right direction. Easily his best season. Now hopefully we can add some more yards to it because that was way down this year. And the running game has plenty of room for improvement as well as Williams is just over 1,000 yards on 3.7 yards a carry. Receiving Devontae Smith over 1,000, Jamar Chase and Rashad Bateman all produce really well, then Tommy Tremble. It seems that tackles almost no matter what give up a ton of sacks here in simulating. I'm not quite sure what's up with that. Maybe it's just they've overpowered some edge rushers? Hard to say. But Parsons ends up with 11, and Jaden Timmons ends up leading the team in sacks. Star development, 304 pounds, 90 block shed. He led the team in sacks with a pass rush move no higher than 76. Watch out. JOK ends up leading us in interceptions with three. So all in all, solid year, good building block, but plenty of room for improvement. Development-wise, here's where we're at. Now, three complete years in this franchise. Don't think anything changed here on the offensive side. And for the defense, Bolton is up to Superstar. We signed him when he only had Star. So his development continues to go extremely well. A lot better than I expected, but now he's got, you know, good speed, great tackling ability, great intangibles, 78 zone is not bad. He's a complete linebacker. On top of that, JOK just unlocked Superstar Dev. So we have a lot of high development players on this defense. And now I'm really glad we got Bolton under contract. I wonder what the new demand would have been. And then you have Jaden Timmons, who had a chance to have the breakout scenario for Superstar, but earned it anyway, leading the team in sacks. Yeah, this team should be really good next year. The Saints won the Super Bowl this year after losing it the year before, so they have been the team to beat, at least here in the NFC. Let's take a look at their roster and see like what a top tier team in the franchise looks like. Marlon Humphrey, Quinn and Williams, Trey Lance, all young by the way. Lance, 96 overall, 24 years old. Laramie Tunsil, Ronald Jones, up to a 93. What is Rojo doing here in this series? Wouldn't he have been drafted? Like what is Ronald Jones in the game? Like an 80, maybe? He gets a million touchdowns, decent yards to carry, and catches the ball. I mean, he's in a good offense. Like, if you go to the Panthers, or the Saints, or the Cowboys, you're in a good offense in Madden for running backs, even after they nerf the receiving a little bit. Yeah, this team is really strong. They're going to be a problem. Now, signing these backups also becomes a little trickier because low 70s players still want decent-sized contracts. A few million dollars per player starts to add up pretty quickly. So you got to be kind of selective here. I think on one-year deals, we don't have to worry about much. So we'll take care of a lot of those, but multi-year deals will be tougher to pull off if I don't want to part ways with all that money. And in this case, for Aleem McNeil, I probably won't for a third defensive tackle. I will make an exception for some offensive linemen because they pretty much get hurt all the time. And you're going to need some spot starters. So I'll make sure we have good depth. But this ends up meaning that we're probably going to lose a handful of these players if I don't offer them deals. And I think I will offer this contract to Kellen Mond. Like, if Fields were to go down with the rookie rules in this series, I mean, just let me have Kellen Mond as my backup then. The difficult thing here with the draft is deciding what to do with the first round pick, where I have a chance to maybe draft a starter, but the team doesn't have, like, 
room for a lot of new starters. I think here, you know, you try to trade up, make a big difference, maybe do something splashy. I feel like this is a team that probably could afford to draft like the best running back and just try to get like superstar dev and have a new dynamic player to build around because what else am I going to do? I mean, we already have some really good pass rushers, Philbin, Timmons, Owe, and of course, Micah Parsons. A corner wouldn't be bad, but I think just trying to find like the ultimate difference maker is the right way to go about things. Tight end and running back might be the easiest ways to do that, especially picking as low as we are. So we don't pick until 19th in the draft. Let's take a look at those positions here. So at running back, we have three scouted here in the early rounds. Oscar Redman, early first rounder from UCF. And then we have Jaquan Wake, a late first round talent. 4-4-3, really good three cone and shuttle. So both are really solid options. But for Redman, you have that early first round talent, a little bit slower, but he'll make up for it in other skills that boost his overall. At tight end, we could end up taking Alexander Macklin. I mean, I like Tommy Tremble, but he's one of the lowest rated starters that we have. So there are two choices, potentially. At corner, a lot of first round talents in this class. Javon Bradfield, late one talent. Melvin Flanagan has late one, running a flat 4-3. That's impressive. Manny Silvers, mid one. Really good combine, really good size. I definitely like him. Raphael Bronson is a late one talent, running a 4-3-5, and Jamie Cumberland is a late two. Ooh, that top three is good for Levante Jones. A minus zone coverage, 6-3, 202. You can move him to corner, right? He'd be fine. Early first round talent, too. The way we're drafting here is basically like. We want to get one starter a year, basically, and the rest is just filling out the roster and trying to build some depth. So we'll simulate a handful of picks, and then we could consider trading up, and there are a few players that are really intriguing here. So we pick at 19. I want to get, like, away from the top five to seven picks, then trading up becomes a little bit easier. Let's trade two more. Quarterback off the board. Arizona goes Levante Jones. I kind of wanted to move up for him. He's going to be the best player in the class, isn't he? Anyway, I kind of like the idea of going with the running back here. And seeing if we can get like high dev and a dynamic player to add to the offense. I do like Alexander Macklin a lot as well. Mid one talent with an awesome combine. If you want to try to get both, though, you definitely don't take Redmond first because he's projected mid two. So I think you can move up maybe a few spots to get Macklin as the top tight end. On the available board, they'll have him eight. So you don't want to sit around forever here. He's going in the next five picks, I predict. I'm trying to hold on to the second round pick. So I can try trading up with that one. But I don't know if this can work here. One, three, four. That's kind of the best offer I can do here. So I'll sim past this pick. They go with a receiver. Tight end is number two on the Bills needs. Like this is big time. We need this to work. Third round pick to trade up nine spots. I don't know if this is going to be enough either. I think we're going to fall short if we don't offer up that second. I'm not sure you can turn that third round pick into the running back, though. That's the problem. And they don't even have a ton of interest here in Tommy Tremble. So if I wanted to add him to the trade, 
because we're going to draft the tight end with the pick. It really wouldn't help us out enough. So I guess we're giving Buffalo a chance here. Hopefully they don't take the tight end, but they go linebacker. Kind of forgot we're in a fantasy draft here. I'm like, oh, maybe I can sim past Detroit because they have Hawkinson. And then remembered it's not that kind of a series. So can I move up eight spots here? It's not a ton. This may actually work. The three and the five combined. Come on. The three and the four would work. But how am I moving up with the second round pick is the problem. You know how I end up doing this in these trades. I just sim and sim too far, but I am simming past Detroit and they go corner. There's also the possibility of using future picks, which is definitely something to consider here. We don't need a lot of players in these classes. And if I can get like tight end solved, running back solved, it's even less needs for the future. At least until the contracts add up, but I'm trying to forget that happening. But uh, I won't be able to avoid it soon. But we do move up seven slots. I was determined to trade up. It works. And we're going to take the top tight end in the class. And please don't have normal development. Not after how hard I worked to trade up to this pick. Alexander Macklin has hidden development he's a 76 overall tight end 89 speed 82 catching okay route runnings 57 blocking let's go he's gonna start too now i want the best running back in the class i'll sim a few picks and then i'll gauge how far this is going to uh go like where the realistic spot could be like this right here is a full round difference in where our next pick is so the Packers are on the clock all I have now is a two of four and a six that's the best offer out of this year's picks I can make and it's not anywhere close now, if I start to mortgage the future a little bit and say, all right, next year's two is thrown in, then we might be able to make this to work. So a two, next year's two, a four, okay. So we give up a future two and a fourth round pick. Green Bay continues to trade down and we are going to get what we were looking for out of this draft and still have a couple of chances to add backups which is all I'm trying to do. It's starter or just pure backup. Early first round talent, Oscar Redman. Hidden development running back, 77 overall. He ran like a 4.47. Just give me 91 speed. Is that greedy? 92 with 81 break tackle, 79 ball carrier vision. So he can't catch the ball that well. That's a bit of a concern. And he's a bit injury prone too. So he's probably not going to play every snap. But I think you make him the RB1. Let somebody else be third down running back. And see where that takes you. Now we get to wait five rounds before our next pick. Where we're just going to draft a couple of backups. I let the CPU handle those. They took another running back and a wide receiver. Just want to check on one player. Considered trading up for Levante Jones. Hidden Dev, 81 overall, 6'3", 202. Low speed for corner. You could make it work. I don't know what his press is, but that would become more of a key rating for him. I think with 89 speed, you're probably better off keeping him at corner. But with upgrades, I mean, speed isn't that uncommon. Doesn't matter, he's not on our team, but what could have been, you know? Who is this year's training camp standout? Odafe away. Let's boost the pass rushing. If you can make that your strength, you're going to go far as a defense. This front four is going to be incredible. 
The new season is set to get underway. Odafe Owe is trying to continue his breakout. And if he can have a big debut, that will happen. I don't think I've had that happen to me yet in any of my franchises I've done. But here we are, an 85 overall team now. 85 offense, 85 defense. This year, we're hoping to see big improvements out of the offense. We just added two hidden dev skill players to a team whose offensive line is improving. And now we have four players, at least 80, and Freeman is going to get there soon. Two superstar receivers, Justin Fields, who is due an upgrade here, and will make him an 84 overall. Those upgrades will come in a little bit slower now, but plus four awareness is really solid. That'll give him 78. For the defense, four superstars, one X Factor, five star dev players. I mean, come on. This team's got to go win like 12 games or it's a disappointment. Well, week one isn't what I expected, allowing over 400 yards to Trevor Lawrence, who threw five touchdown passes against our defense on low yardage. But good day on the ground for Najee Harris. What about the rookie here in his debut? Did he even play? He might have gotten hurt. Jamar Chase with a touchdown. Bateman. But rough day for the defense. You don't count on too many games like these. One new injury. We knew he was going to be injury prone. And a foot fracture will take him out for the next two weeks. He had to have gotten hurt really quick then. Yeah, two carries. He has negative one career yards. Three downs played. But it looks like Adafe Owe did complete his camp standout scenario. And he's already gotten the pass rush boost, but now the conclusion gives him 10k experience. That's how it ends. They had more for me to do here. And it can continue even further, but he needs, like, a massive game to do it. Why isn't this working? We're getting destroyed on the ground every game. We ran for 14 yards. We scored 14 points and had 14 rushing yards. How? And Fields had 12 of them. 11 for 2! Saquon Barkley against the Jets, what was it, 2019? Wow, that's actually right, yeah. In 2019, 13 carries for a yard. So, that's what Javante Williams basically did. And both yards were after contact, apparently. How can a running game be that bad with this soul line? Maybe I gotta change up the playbook or something because it's just not working that well. As far as scheme fit stuff goes, looks like our best is still going to be that vertical power run or vertical zone run, whichever. We'll change up the defensive scheme here and just go with uh, base 4-3. But why don't we try out a different offensive playbook here? Because that is just not working right now. We were like last in passing last year. I just want a decent offense. Give me Sean McVay. Well, just like last season, we've lost our first three. And the offense is awful. Four touchdowns for Patrick Mahomes. Justin Fields, 14 of 30 for 151 and one touchdown. Now, we ran the ball for more than 14 yards, but we're 0-3 again. At least Macklin scored our only touchdown. Um, I think this team is broken. How do you give up 35 points in one quarter? 56 to 20. We're 0-4. Jordan Love with four touchdown passes. Justin Fields with a really bad game again. 
22 for 56. Redmond's back. Only three yards of carry for him. But what has happened to our team? On paper, it just continues getting better. We went to the playoffs last season. We were a legitimate good offense or a good defense. But now we're 0-4. We got to be like awful at everything here. Come on. How are we third worst in offensive scoring and second worst in defensive scoring? 37 and a half points in the NFL. And now Jaden Timmons is going to miss seven weeks. This season's over. Oh, and by the way, we get to talk more about contracts for this season. And, you know, Micah Parsons is going to want $100 million. Devontae Smith is going to be do a deal. Javante Williams, Adafe Owe, JOK, like... <sighs> I was hoping we would tackle these problems with some wins. I'm giving Micah Parsons a six-year offer. $125 million. And I know I'd want Devontae Smith under contract as well. So, those are done. Can this season get any worse? JOK is going to miss a game. Andrew Cummings. Patrick Klein had to come in. And tore his ACL. Even when we win, it's like not even impressive. 10 to 7? 17 combined points. So who scored? Dom Williams. As uh, Redmond got hurt again. A one-week injury. But those injuries are already popping up and really impacting his rookie season. All I'm going to accomplish this year is... Handing out some big contracts that will set us up for the next chapter. But we are not accomplishing our goal with this team today. This is rough. And that cap space for the future is already starting to go down quickly. I'm trying my best here. But, uh... I'm not exactly sure when to stop signing players. I'm not going to sign Bateman right now. Maybe we can add a receiver. We can't sign everybody. I feel like I can replace a receiver, a safety. I don't want to replace really good inside linebackers. I don't want to replace defensive linemen. And I don't want to replace offensive linemen. After all that solid improvement, we end up going 7 and 10 this year we actually finished this season quite strong which will hurt our draft positioning here after losing our first four and seven of our first eight then we actually played decent football down the stretch but once again we were one of the worst offenses in the nfl like zero improvement and then the defense took a step back so, what do you do? Because, I mean, we're just trying to develop these players. And the offensive line, I mean, looks like it should be really good. The offense itself looks like it should be dynamic. Maybe we can add a receiver, though. Not against that. Is Justin Fields the right quarterback? Well, last year he put up really good production. This year, 27 touchdowns, 14 picks. Not special there, and too many turnovers three of these four years. For the defense, I'm not quite sure where to begin because I expected them to be, like, really, really good. But they weren't. Overall, here are the stats, and Oscar Redman did lead us in rushing yards, but at 3.1 yards per carry, and Javante Williams was only a little bit better. Running game continues to struggle. Receiving, Devontae Smith over 1,000 yards. Good years for our top three receivers. And Alexander Macklin maybe gives him a chance to win Rookie of the Year. He does have star development, close to an 80. This so far is going as planned. What was the dev for Redman? 
he is star as well. I'm guessing the tackles allowed more sacks, but it was a nice improvement, especially for Derisaw. And defensively, Bolton and JOK, they rack up all the stats here. One of them might become an X Factor. We had Parsons get 11 and a half sacks, 7.5 for Owe. Timmons, only three, but he also missed much of the season and maybe overachieved a little bit the year before. At least the Vikings have now won a Super Bowl in this franchise, unlike my actual Vikings rebuild I tried doing a month ago. But now we're four years through, and we just took a big step backwards. If you'd like to see more of this, let me know down below, and I'll continue trying to build this team up into a contender but soon those contracts are going to play a really big role we only have 86 million dollars right now in a cap space and this coming year would be like the justin fields decision and all the top players we drafted basically from that first fantasy draft one thing i should do though is like take the best free agent i'm not going to sign franchise tag him and then trade him away to try and get picks and that would probably end up being like Javante Williams this year or Rashad Bateman. And that might help us get a couple more chances at the draft if we do things like that. But tough episode today. That will do it for this one, everybody. Again, let me know what you thought of the video. I hope you had fun with it. I want to make this very different from my Giants rebuild and it's certainly different. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, have a great day, everybody. I'll see you next time.